In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this very nice high voltage plate for use with Kirlian photography. How the plate works, you have a high voltage alternating current source. This will not work with DC. It connects to this bare copper wire right here. The high voltage drive circuit, which you're going to see, was uploaded in a previous video. So I will have the link to that video in the video description area so you know exactly what to use to drive this plate. Once an object is placed on top of the glass and the power is turned on, what will happen is there's going to be a corona discharge around the entire object. It looks very, very cool. And when I turn the lights down to demonstrate, you're going to see several examples. You could take photographs of those objects or video. Now my camera is not the greatest in low light, but I will try some video anyway to show you along with the still images. Okay, let me show you how it's made. You're going to need two pieces of glass. Each one measures four inches by eight inches. You're going to need around two and a half feet of 20 gauge solid copper wire. You could usually find that in thermostat wire or doorbell wire, low voltage wiring. So you can go pick up two or three feet of that. You're also going to need four of these 3 8 inch by one inch nylon spacers, a squeeze tube of silicone, works very well with high voltages. On the bottom, you can see there are green little pads, and you could pick these up as well to go on the bottom. It's a 3 8 inch felt self-stick pad. The first thing you're going to do is take one piece of glass, lay it on a flat surface, and then using silicone glue, you're going to glue each one of the posts onto the glass in this direction. So you push it down, it'll be sticking up here, there, there, and there. Once that sets up, six to eight hours later, you can apply the felt pads and then turn the whole thing over so it looks like what you see right here. Next, you're going to take that copper wire and you're going to bend it to go around the entire perimeter of the glass. Make sure the corners are nice 90 degree corners and keep the wire in from the edge between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. Leave a little space between where the wire goes in and where the wire ends, no less than an eighth of an inch, because in between these two panes of glass is water. So you're going to have to fill this up before you seal it. Once you position the wire on top of the first piece of glass which has the feet on the bottom already, you then take the second piece of glass, position it exactly where you want it, over the top of the other piece of glass, and you make sure the wire is properly positioned. Once it's properly positioned, you're going to take a weight, place it on the center of the glass, not too heavy, just enough to keep it from moving, and then you're going to take the silicone glue and you're going to inject silicone, do a nice job. As you're squeezing, you'll see it going into the space between the two panes of glass. Make sure there's no air pockets. Fill it up and go slowly down the whole line, all the way around, and make sure you leave just this spot open right here. Once everything is sealed and allowed to set overnight, you're then going to take this, you're going to put this all the way upward, so it's on end. Let's do it this way so the camera can see. This would be the opening where the water would go in. You could do it by putting the faucet on very slow to get it to go between the two plates. The spacing is around one millimeter, which is the diameter of this 20 gauge wire. Once you fill it all the way up, tilt it like this to get any air out. And then once you get it there, take a tissue, dry between the glass, and you're going to inject silicone until it fills up the whole void and allow that to sit overnight. When it's dry, you'll end up with something very nice, like you see right here. And you can see the wire. There's a space right there, and it goes all the way around. Now that you understand how the plate was made, let me connect up the high voltage supply and show you what everything looks like hooked up. And this is what it looks like with everything connected. You have your ignition coil, you have the drive circuit for the ignition coil. This wire here is a ground connected to the negative on the battery. This is the positive, which supplies power to the drive circuit. There's also a switch. 
I'm also using a sealed lead acid battery rated 7 amp hours. If you want more information on this high voltage circuit, I'm not going to be getting into it in this video, but you can click on the link to that video in the video description area. To connect the coil to the plate, I took an eighth inch OD brass tube, flattened both ends, slid the one end inside the coil. The other end is very snug on the copper wire going to the plate. I'll show you an image looking directly in so you can see what I did. There is one more thing you may want to pick up. This is the ground wire, a one inch thick piece of polyurethane foam. And what that's for, you would place the object on here and then you could slide it, it without this piece of rubber under it, it would slide directly under like this, it's the same height. There you go. And you can see now the coin is pressed tightly against the glass. And when you take a picture, you can see the full corona discharge all the way around. This wire, the ground, goes through a hole in the foam right there from the bottom. When it sticks out on top, you'll bend it over like that and then the coin would be right against it before you slide it under. When this is powered up, I could put my hand like this and you'll be able to see the corona discharge all over my fingers. Okay, let me power this up, turn off the lights and show you what it can do. Okay, the first object is going to be this key right here. I have the ground wire from the battery resting on top of the key. I'm going to do it this way first and then I'm going to put the key underneath the glass with the ground wire going through the polyurethane foam touching the back side of the key. Let me turn off the lights and give you a demonstration. Now I'm going to take a picture to show you how much better it is using a photograph. And as you can see, taking a picture shows the effect perfectly. This camera does an excellent job at taking pictures in the dark, but it is not a good one for taking video in the dark. What we're going to do now is take the key, place it underneath the glass, and repeat the process. The wire is now underneath the key, touching the back side of the key, and we have the key pressing up against the back side of the glass. Let me power up the circuit and I'll take another photograph of the key. As you saw, it works the exact same way. The only exception is you get a better glow around the edge of the key because of the white foam. Now let me place a coin in there. Okay, the quarter's in position. I'm going to turn off the lights and turn on the power supply. And you just saw how cool that looked with the corona discharge all around the quarter. Let me place a leaf under the plate. Okay, the leaf is in position. Let me turn off the lights, power up the unit. And you saw how cool that was. You can see all the corona discharge coming off of the whole leaf around the edges. Over here you can see where the ground wire was burning into the leaf on the back side of the leaf. So when I do touch my hand to the glass, I can feel a fairly strong tingling sensation. I'm going to turn it on. You can hear it when it actually connects to my finger with the corona. You'll hear the sizzling. <laughs> That's pretty strong.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.